Hello and welcome to PostgreSQL, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I am Michael, founder of PG Mustard, and this is my co-host Nikolai, founder of PostgreSQL. Hey Nikolai, what are we going to be talking about today? Yeah, hello Michael. Uh, as we decided, uh, let's talk about index maintenance. First of all, blot removal, but maybe not only, right? Yeah, we've alluded to this in a previous episode uh, around uh, vacuum, about I believe. Oh, about bloat specifically, yeah. Um, so yeah, excited to get to dive into this with you. So should we start with how this occurs, perhaps, or re- quick recap on is is this always a problem? If I if I have a Postgres database, is it very likely I'm suffering from this at the moment, or is it is there a chance that it's it's fine? Yeah, by the way, you are right. Uh, of the our episode was called vacuum, not bloat, but we are so close to each other, right? Because yeah. usually, uh, like we we talk about bloat and uh, lack of vacuuming uh, or like some inefficient vacuuming and so on. Uh, this is a great question uh, you asked. You just asked, uh, like, do we if if we tuned our our auto vacuum quite aggressive to be quite aggressive, everything looks fine. Uh, st- the question is still should we have index maintenance from time to time is it inevitable and in my uh, opinion from my practice the answer is yes uh, due to many reasons uh, and auto vacuum won't solve everything and you, some bloat will still be accumulated even if you have very aggressive vacuuming and observing other databases database systems for example SQL Server Microsoft SQL Server they also have uh, index maintenance as a routine task for DBAs, DBRREs, and uh, like I, in my opinion, you, you, you should still in very loaded, growing, large systems. You, you should you should uh, uh, recreate indexes from time to time anyway. And uh, aggressive auto vacuuming will only reduce the frequency of uh, this need uh, that comes. Like it will come less frequent, but still you need to recreate them. Yeah, I think that's a really good point on heavily loaded systems. I think that probably the only caveat I would put is if you've got a relatively light load on your Postgres uh, database, this might be something you don't come across. If if right. uh, Even if you haven't tuned auto vacuum, it will be tidying things up as it goes along, freeing up uh, index pages, especially on later versions of Postgres. Uh, there's some There's some additional logic to make that even less likely to bloat but yeah there's um there's i think it's even worse than for tables though with indexes right like vacuums able to free up space in tables much well yeah uh refer to a previous episode for more details but um it's i think on in tables you can free up space and it's much more easily reused whereas if you uh if if you get page splits for example in a p in a b tree index if you get page splits a uh, vacuum can free up those uh, that space in those pages again, but it can't unsplit. But it doesn't them. rebalance B three, right? Exactly, it doesn't rebalance them. And and uh, uh, I, I agree with you. Some systems might not need uh, automatic uh, index uh, recreation, uh, but uh, I th- I'm I'm sure everyone needs uh, monitoring and analysis of bloat uh, on like on regular basis. So. This this is a, a must for everyone, and in my opinion, and uh, the question is <laughs> how to uh, analyze blood because it's not a trivial task. Uh, uh, the uh, all the scripts we have for fast uh, blood analysis, lightweight analysis, they are all wrong. I mean, they can have uh, some errors. They are not precise. For example, create a table with uh, three columns. Um, small int, time timestamp tz. Don't use timestamp without tz. And uh, small int again. Fill it with a uh, few million rows, and use your script to create an index, and uh, use your script uh, to estimate bloat in table and in index. Two actual actually, it's two different scripts, right? But still. At least for table, I'm, I, I'm sure you will see terrible bloat, but we know there is no bloat there yet. We just inserted rows. So we, we didn't delete, didn't update, so no bloat. Uh, you will see something like 30% of bloat. 
estimated. So we need to keep in mind our scripts, and and they, our scripts uh, they have errors sometimes, uh, quite significant ones, uh, because they don't take into account alignment painting. Painting this uh, small experiment I just described it by purpose uh, has uh, zero, zero bytes gaps uh, between uh, columns in, inside each page, uh, column values. I'm not sure, by the way, about index. I, I, it should also have some blood. Maybe no. Maybe no. Maybe I'm I, I'm wrong here. It, it's only, it's only maybe about heap only. Maybe multi-column indexes, but I don't. I haven't checked. Right. Any, anyway, uh, estimation uh, scripts are great because they are light, uh, but they have. We need to keep in mind this. I, I always correct everyone saying bloat is this. I say estimated bloat is this because it's not. Yeah. Really. The real number can be obtained by uh, using pgstat tuple, pgstat tuple uh, extension. Uh, by the way, I, ha I had uh, no good luck using it. Some, it, it had problems as well in the past, so, so I don't use it myself. Uh, in, my, in, in my approach, since we work a lot with uh, clones of production environments, I always say let's just uh, run vacuum full on, on a clone because why not? And compare numbers before and after, and this is a reliable number of blood we, we have. We, we can just know like this is a real exact number because vacuum full showed, showed it us, to us. Yeah. So the clones are cool here as well. Yeah. Right? And, and but this you need to is, wait I guess a little this... bit, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this leads us to quite an, an interesting part of the topic, which is when should you worry about this? And I, I might even argue that 30% bloat is probably not that bad. Not, you know, not that bad. So, but if it shows 60 and 30 of those of those 60 is a, an error, <laughs> you decided to bloat probably. Like it, it affects the, the, the fact that it's an estimate, it affects our decisions anyway. For sure. But just to give people peace of mind, you know, when we're talking about badly bloated indexes, they could easily be triple the size of a, of a re-indexed. Oh, uh, this is great, by the way. I, this is what I uh, exercise I do usually. People see 90% bloat, but they say, is it bad? But I say 90% bloat means that your index size is 10 times bigger than it would be without bloat. 99% means 100 times bigger. 100 times bigger, it's already quite noticeable and by the way uh, i wanted to mention uh, those i say lightweight estimate scripts they sometimes are not light at all and we have yeah. many cases when they fail to uh, to finish during statement timeout like 15 or 30 seconds because too many indexes and uh, analysis is, uh, takes time as well so we, this is not something you you should put to monitoring uh, to run each minute probably you, you don't need it every minute you need it uh, once per day maybe because it doesn't change uh, very frequent very very fast but back to the question about um, okay we have 99 percent bloat meaning our index is 100 bigger 100 times bigger question is is it bad but we or have why, this space why is it yeah yeah so oh, the, yes the, it's bad but why is it, it's, yeah. it's bad how this how is, is it bad yeah, this is a fun kind of very specific uh, thing that we came across working with query plans. And it's it's funny because because this feels like a, a we, we discussed it last week, but macro analysis problem, you know, at system level, what's going wrong, but you can spot it sometimes from a single query plan. So if you if you notice, maybe your queries are slower, uh, they or they could degrading over time, the same query uh, is, is, is maybe doing an index scan, but that is getting slower over time and you look at buffers uh, again a previous episode you can sometimes see that that those buffer numbers are way higher than they need to be for the amount of data involved or gradually increasing each time you run it so it, it's not guaranteed that that's a sign of bloat but there's a really good chance that it is this is great by the way you you, are, you apply this classification of macro and micro and i even didn't think about it but it's uh, exactly like aligns with my, th my thoughts. So we have macro effects and micro effects, starting from micro effects. Sometimes some particular queries and with particular parameters might behave much worse for bloated, uh, in the case of bloated index, because for example, instead of dealing with a few buffers, we need to deal with entries which are sparsely stored and we need 
to involve much more buffers. So we have, we can see degradation sometimes all, uh, several orders of magnitude. It's like in extreme cases. And, but it's tricky to find, uh, for example, you checked uh, your query for a few parameter sets. You see it's not bad f compared to like bloated versus unbloated, right? And, but you don't look at other parameters, but for other parameters, it may, may be worse. So it's, it's a tricky how to like automatically, for example, check how bad it is. Because actually like B3 grow, height grows quite slowly. It's logarithm with um, basis yeah. very high. Like, so it grows very slowly. And if we go from, I don't know, like one, thousand uh, buffers to 10 to 100 thousand buffers for overall index uh, size or million buffers already we don't see a huge um, increase in lookup time because of uh, high, uh, growth of height because we just a, a few okay a couple of more hops to reach the leaf yeah. who, who cares a couple of more ios it doesn't matter so B3 is excellent here. Like it grows very slowly. So searching in, uh, uh, let's find one row among a million rows or let's find one row among a billion rows. Well, difference is not huge, right? It's not, it won't be noticeable. Like it won't be uh, 1000 different times difference. It will be small difference, a few more yeah. IO hops. But uh, if we, you, if you need to deal with many, many entries and, uh, bloat uh, means that uh, distribution of them, they, they are stored like sparsely in the case of bloated index. Of course, the, the difference will be amazing. And in, sometimes index maintenance also involves clustering, right? Because, for example, PGRPAC, I, I hope we will discuss it uh, in a few minutes. PGRPAC supports clustering on the fly, so you uh, rebuilding heap, you can cluster uh, using some index and, and data uh, rows will be stored in compact way for you if you use some index uh, scan for example uh, but it's not about index maintenance by the way it's about uh, reducing bloat in heap right but so we've covered i guess that's covering micro a little bit but on the macro side we've got things like cache macro I guess. in yeah. my opinion is much more interesting yeah. i feel it i feel it like uh, if we have a 99% bloat. It means we need to, we, we, we have so many more pages f to store, to store the same data if in our index. And it means that not only disk space occupied, uh, I, I like worried about it less, but it not like disk space is interesting. I, I, I will explain my thoughts in, in a second, but the most uh, noticeable performance of a negative effect from a high bloat of indexes in my opinion is uh, they need we need to keep more pages in in cache both in the buffer pool and uh, page cache so it means that our cache effective effectiveness reduces uh, I, I i have cases sometimes where some that database or a few databases, they grow so quickly and the company may, uh, using these databases may already be a multi-billion company, yeah, unicorn, but uh, never, nobody never fight, fought, was fighting with uh, bloat. So, uh, for example, up to half of databases bloat, both table and index. And it means that uh, our shared buffers work much worse. Yeah. Right? This is a great point, actually. Again, a caveat is this this applies, of course, when your database exceeds the size or database, including indexes, including bloated indexes, exceeds the size of shared buffers. Before then, probably not going to cause you any issues. But most of us are probably running databases uh, right. where we exceed <laughs> shared if, buffers. Yeah. Or if it exceeds uh, uh, the cache size, buffer, buffer pool size, uh, but if you eliminate bloat, it, it fits again, right? <laughs> yeah. But that would <laughs> be, happen. that would, it would, went, that would, imagine that the difference you would see then, like it would be stark, the difference. Um, yeah, this yeah, macro exactly. effect is quite noticeable. It also, uh, we can talk about uh, uh, budgets here, right? like spending on hardware. Or in the case of Aurora, where, where they charge for IO, 
if uh, we need to do much more IO, uh, we can save here, right? But uh, also, also this macro effect is very interesting. I think it's maybe it's the most uh, important one, in my opinion, in terms of performance. But third one, and this third one, the disk space occupied, is, is usually the first thing that comes to mind when we talk about we think about bloat. Bloat it means that we occupy much more space, so disk, uh, we pay for disk, but not only we pay for disk. Uh, if we also recall our previous episodes, we need to write more to wall, right? Yeah. Full page writes, for example. Uh, index writes also go there to wall. And um, we need uh, more, uh, more wall is generated. It means also, uh, but, and data files also bigger, wall is bigger, because it's, it, it puts, it gives uh, more uh, work for backup system. Uh, backup yeah. is longer. Uh, but also replication, physical at least, uh, it also uh, slow. Like uh, m more more bytes need to be transferred to standby nodes. Like negative effects everywhere, right? On all yeah, systems. it's a really good point. Yeah, Ch check pointer also actually check pointer also needs to uh, take care of about uh, more uh, dirty pages. Yeah. So in an ideal world, we. The ideal world is not to grow your indexes 10x and then re-index them to shrink them back down. You, we, in an ideal world, we'll stay on top of it um, and so, it, so it stays in a much more ma uh, manageable range. Right. Um, f firstly, I guess through auto vacuum, but also as we've discussed, auto vacuum can't uh, shrink it down once it's started to bloat. So we do need to do these occasional re-index ideally re-index concurrently i'm guessing or as you were going to say i guess pg repack right in in, in the so, so we have a tool called postgres checkup which explains a lot of details about bloat provides some recommendations and so on i mean we postgres ai we have this tool and uh it like it tries to explain what to do but in general the plan we recommend uh especially for cases which are like quite uh, like uh, for example database company was super successful database grown but uh, there's no proper processes in place we usually uh, recommend of course uh, reconsider auto vacuum settings 100 percent but not always this will help to like we just we just discussed that the index health may, may degrade also if you have long transactions also i if you have large tables, let's touch it once again in, in a minute. You will, uh, auto vacuum won't help you a lot, but it's still needed to make it more aggressive to eliminate dead, dead tuples uh, faster. Then run uh, index maintenance once, and then prepare to run it uh, maybe in fully automated fashion during weekends because uh, index maintenance means index recreation, and it, it's definitely stress for disk. And for wall as well, and for replication as well. So it's definitely some stress. So prepare to uh, run auto automatically every, for example, every every weekend. For example, in GitLab we did it. Uh, GitLab is cl uh, disclaimer cl our client, and they have a lot of interesting information, automation, and articles uh, how they automate it, and they run fully automated index recreation every weekend. That's awesome. I, I should read those. I haven't. <laughs> Right. The question is how to recreate indexes. Uh, it's a question uh, like depends depending on your version, on your Postgres version. From Postgres 12, it's possible to run a, a index concurrently. Good. Earlier, well, the idea is okay. You can uh, create index, drop old one, rename. But but uh, if this index uh, is participating in some constraints like primary key, it will it will be quite uh, a task. But there is also pgrepack. Uh, pgrepack uh, uh, can run uh, can repack indexes basically recreate them uh, in uh, not touching tables because ta table removal bloat from table is like a bigger task than just recreation of indexes. So pgrepack can work with any Postgres major version. I mean, not the, the old world one, but, but for example, 9.6. 
Yeah. It has some interesting caveats, uh, though. For example, if you have deferred constraints, do I pronounce it right? Deferred constraints, yeah. right? So Perfect. if you have deferred constraints, uh, you might have issues with uh, running PGD pack, uh, but for, for table, actually, not for index. For index, it's fine. For table, it, it can have issues. Okay. M Miro had problems, uh, but and they, had, they wrote an excellent article. Well, we can provide, provide a link. If you need to fight with bloat in table and you have deferred constraints, it's a very good read. But for indexes, uh, there won't be any problem, right? So, but well, but modern modern approach is just reindex concurrently. Unfortunately, reindex con reindex concurrently. Uh, this feature had so many bugs fixed. All of them are fixed, right? But uh, history shows that, uh, like, many people, including my, me, already think uh, there might be more bugs uh, found in this problem. So I, I would recommend if you run uh, index concurrently, it's worth uh, to also having some uh, process of index verification. Uh, for example, Using ARM check, you can control um, check for corruption periodically, weekly, for example. Also, after index recreation, it maybe it's a good idea to double check if there is corruption or no. Because, because right, because this yeah. this this uh, recent bug which was discovered in May in Postgres 14, we briefly discussed it. So. The interesting thing is that if you have uh, huge tables, like terabyte size, multi-terabyte size, and they are not partitioned, uh, index creation, mean, meaning that we have um, an index, uh, we, we, we create index or we recreate index, during all this time it can take hours. Uh, Autovacuum cannot delete that tuples in any table, any index. Uh, it's a database-wide problem. And po in Postgres 14, it, uh, there was an attempt to, Im to improve and fix it. Xmin Horizon was not uh, being held during index creation or recreation. But unfortunately, a bug was discovered in May, and in June, Postgres 14.4 uh, had this uh, functionality fix optimization reverted. So the rule of thumb don't allow your tables to grow more than 100 gigabytes because index maintenance will require more index maintenance. Yeah. And um, <laughs> right. actually, just while we're on that topic, so I think if you're on a, a minor version of 14, lower than 14.4, it's, it's high, you, and you, you use re-index concurrently, upgrade, up, upgrade yes. with the exception, I think, of RDS and Aurora, who backpatched it to 14.3 mm, on I there. I didn't know about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not um, only re-index yeah. concurrently, create index concurrently also yes. was a problem. And everyone uses it because how you can create index on running system? Create index concurrently. So if you're running 14.0 till 14.3, uh, you have urgent task. I think it, yeah. everyone knows it, but just worth repeating anyway. I met somebody the other day who didn't, unfortunately. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it's worth re repeating. But yeah, um, awesome. You have mentioned a couple of things that we probably should touch on. So index corruption is another version of min maintenance that you might need to do. Um, and I, I know of one time that's really famous for causing corrupt indexes, which is operating system upgrades. Um, well, any operating system is dangerous. Operating yeah. system upgrade is dangerous because uh, a glibc version mm -hmm. upgrade uh, it, it it may it may cause index corruption silently and it's a problem. So it's a big problem, unfortunately. And 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 uh, there is no like easy solution, and it it's quite easy to get into trouble if you don't think about it yourself. Unfortunately, yeah. So. Well just wanted to say it because just so in any case anybody else wasn't aware of that one uh, I certainly wasn't a year or two ago so um, yeah you need to recreate yeah, indexes beware. and you need to do it inside maintenance window yeah also unfortunately uh, like gene indexes can be bloated as well and there is no good way to estimate it and they can be corrupted as well also there is no good way official way to estimate it there are patches for RAM check that still are not applied and, but uh, they are already quite advanced, and I used those patches uh, to verify gene and indexes uh, in a couple of places, and it worked 
So I mean, uh, I didn't find anything. So there's also always question. We had false positives they, there. It was fixed, but yeah. So I think their promise is no false negatives, right? Uh, I'm checking. Right. But I'm uh, no, yeah. Right. Right. So, so uh, if you if you talk about bigger picture, imagine if you have this like case. Uh, successful company very big database but they have a lot of uh, bloat uh, both in tab table and he and um, indexes of course uh, uh, removing table bloat is also interesting but indexes we discussed various problems uh, including this micro uh, level when particular qu queries are slow removing th that bloat by the way sometimes uh, uh, if you have queue-like pattern of working with table. You insert, probably update a few times and delete because task was processed. This is a good way to get high bloat. And I saw many times that high bloat at some point, it's like fine, but at some point, a query is degraded very fast because of this micro-level problem. I mean, we have a memory, we have big shared buffers, table is quite small, like maybe a few gigabytes only. But we see some queries degrade because of these micro-level issues we discussed. So the question is how, uh, where to start? If you have many, many, many hundreds or thousands of indexes, where would you start for this initial uh, run? Would, would you start from small indexes first? But those which have higher, uh, like... You, you put threshold like 90% and, and take care of smaller indexes or large indexes, then you go down. Or you start with indexes which have more bloat bytes first. Where would you start? <laughs> it's a good question. I, I'm, I saw your tweet as well about asking people about unused and redundant indexes as well. And I th I know that maybe I'm cheating by having seen that, but right. that felt like a really nice, like, especially redundant. I'm not so sure about unused because I wonder if a bloated, anyway, I'm not, I'm, uh, it depends on statistics, I guess, a little bit, but redundant being a, by a redundant index, I guess uh, the easiest example of that is you've got the exact same uh, index. So, Maybe let's take a simple case of a single column B tree index, but we've got two of them. Um, well, redundant can be, for example, you have a single column index, you have two column indexes. Of course, single column index uh, is redundant to two column indexes. If if yeah. uh, if uh, two column indexes has the same column on the first place, not in the second place, this is all the classic, masses. Re classic redundant. But the problem will be, what if? Uh, we try to eliminate the first index because it's redundant, but the second index is also unused. And according to different report, we also uh, decide to uh, drop it. <laughs> you drop both indexes, it, and it's not a good idea already. Or well, it's so bloated that uh, Postgres actually avoids using it and goes to the... Uh, uh, this, is, this is an interesting question. So we discussed these problems, micro and macro. Depending on which you can consider is the biggest problem for you, for your case... Uh, I see two options. If you think about particular queries that uh, are uh, have very degraded performance because of bloat, you probably should uh, say, like, let's re uh, re-index all indexes with bloat level more than 90% first. Even if they, they are smaller ones and don't uh, contribute a lot to to uh, this macro level problem, like uh, spamming uh, our buffer pool. But if you think macro level problem is bigger, you probably should start with the biggest, uh, like the, the indexes which have more bloated bytes estimated, right? Order by and well, go from top to down. Even though except some of them are unused. The, I might, can I make a potentially wrong argument for always sure. starting with the smaller ones? I'll be interested in your thoughts. If you if you've got a macro level problem, if your database is on fire and you're trying to um, reduce load, the smaller indexes, whilst they they might be being used, like just because they're smaller doesn't mean they aren't being used more. So I wonder if you could also look at access and if you started with the smaller That's, ones, mm -hmm. the yeah the other um, the other angle would be if I re-index a smaller index it finishes faster and my system reduces its load slightly 
sooner than if I if I reindex a large one and it takes hours. I've got hours more at the same level of high, uh, well, disaster, I guess. But if I start reindexing smaller ones and they finish faster, maybe I can reduce the load a little bit in the, uh, quicker. Well, uh, in my opinion, if if a database on, on fire as a whole, I will start from top to bottom, f fighting with indexes. I I I, th I tried to think about it. Should we look at usage uh, stats uh, for indexes? I didn't see any big reason for that. Like any way we want to, f like we we didn't discuss the threshold, but uh, usually practical threshold is thirty forty percent, some somewhere there. If we have bigger bloat, uh, oh, this is, yeah. This is for bloat, yes. It's, it's, if it's bloat below 30%, 20%, for example, it's, we don't care, usually. And sometimes it's even helpful. Uh, uh, indexes, by the way, are bloated by default 10% uh, by, on, on purpose because they have fill factor 90. But most queries factor in fill factor, right? <laughs> I've seen f I've, most bloat queries factor in fill factor, I think. The ones I've seen have. Uh, most uh, queries... Yeah, most query, most bloat estimation queries factor well, in fill factor. Yeah, they, yes, they take it this into account. But anyway, I mean, ninety percent uh, fill factor means we bloat uh, on purpose because we want some sure. room for yeah. uh, updates uh, inside pages. If it's ninety, if it's if it becomes uh, actually eighty, okay, it's not that bad. I mean, I mean, twenty percent bloat. But if bloat yeah. already has like half of it, it's maybe already time to uh, take care of it. And so I would go from top to bottom if we take care about whole database. But in some cases, database is fine. But some particular queries, for example, this Q Q like pattern we use, and we see this uh, particular queries dealing with this table, they uh, have very bad performance. In this case, I would start from the most bloated indexes regardless of their size maybe i would go from top to bottom as well but i would i would skip for indexes which have bloat estimation 60 70 for, for, for first run to to help as soon as possible those queries which uh, we know they uh, maybe i would take particular tables actually in this yeah. case because right um, why, well, why not but I would actually say I think I I think I think I understand now why that's a really that actually makes sense as a strategy because bloat is not independent of usage. Chances are, if it's a heavily bloated well, uh, table, uh, with, I'll go on. Good, good. But imagine some indexes. Oh, by the way, if indexes are unused, the uh, the we should apply extreme uh, solution for bloat. We just drop index, right? <laughs> Uh, if you so, know it's unused everywhere on standbys yes. everywhere and we observe quite long i usually recommend uh, stat, stat, a statistics age uh, to be more than one month because we had cases which index is unused uh, several weeks we drop it but in the beginning of it, it's not it's, it's Ilya had it and Ilya mentioned uh, Ilya data uh, he mentioned the case when they had it and when first of next month uh, analysts are waiting for some report and they don't see report because index was dropped. So yeah. some indexes are used only once per month and they are very important. So usage numbers, if they are not zero, I don't know how to use them. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I try to, like, how to join bloat and usage, more writes, more reads. But imagine the case. You, you, you have an unused index. You don't use it for index scans. But... Uh, question: Does it contribute to this macro problem, spamming, spamming uh, our caches? Probably not. It's probably yes. been long since evicted. Yes. Oh, you think it yes. does? Any update, How? unless unless it's hot, he uh, yeah. only tuples. Yeah, yeah. It will need to update this index. To update the index, we need to load this page to memory. And so, and and write overhead as well. But interesting. We don't it, use index, so. but still, it occupies some space in our caches so yeah <laughs> interesting uh -huh. and uh, maybe it also has some effects on, at micro level i don't know maybe not so there are many 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 interesting things here but i i hope this discussion will help someone to understand it better and anyway like just fight with blotting indexes and prepare not only to do it once manually but uh, automate it 
we're using PGD pack or index concurrently carefully with some uh, understanding that uh, uh, index concurrently might lead to well, well right now a lot of bugs fixed people use a index concurrently many people use it many projects large projects so it works so I, I don't want to, to be blamed for like uh, Nikolai told us not to use index concurrently use it but just keep in mind that many bugs were fixed and maybe there are some bugs in future so I would just I would just uh, automate it but also automate uh, analysis of corruption using AmCheck um, um, at least is AmCheck we, available? For, managed services or? Oh uh, yeah, it's 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 uh, in standard contrib. Uh, oh perfect! Mo- it's it's a contrib module. It's available everywhere. So. Not all contrib modules are available everywhere, so I'm glad I asked. Right. Um, but the yes, awesome. So, it, you me- you mentioned um, gin indexes briefly. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm, I don't think I don't know enough about maintenance of them, but I think that I read a really good blog post by inside genes. There are bitries. Yeah, <laughs> Sm- like okay. uh, for p- posting list and for keys, as I understand, like two types. Of, maybe I'm wrong. I, I like it's it's already past few years since I touched the uh, gene internals. So maybe I'm wrong here, but definitely there are bitries. I, I know that. Uh, from developers, uh, first some B3 didn't exist and the performance was not, not, not was not good for for larger scale. But uh, B3 inside Jin, there is, and that's why they can be also corrupted uh, when you switch to new glibc version. And the rules of um, uh, character ordering, ca- collation also changes. So, yeah. uh, so Jin can be uh, gist, of course, can be also corrupted because gist is tree as well. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, AmCheck is, doesn't exist. How to eliminate? How to estimate bloat? Also, we don't know. My my rule: use clones, use vacuum full from time to time, yeah. and see actual bloat like that. Reliable number, like straight brute force approach. Yeah, I like it. It's the first good case, uh, first good use case for vacuum full on a on an active system I've seen. Um, yes. Of so, course, it will take many hours if you have many terabytes of uh, in size. But maybe you should have partitioning as a reminder. Right? Like don't allow your tables to grow over 100 gigs. And then if you have partitioning, you can run AmCheck in parallel. By the way, it's a not, not a trivial task. Uh, we have some scripts, uh, automation scripts uh, developed for GitLab, I guess. And, and also... Um, uh, run, we can run AmCheck in parallel. We can run vacuum full in parallel uh, on very, like, uh, temporarily clone, which has a lot of power. And this automation is good to have. Nice. Is that in but recent versions or has that been around for a while? In recent what? what? Versions of Postgres. Uh, you mean AmCheck or? Oh, uh, vacuum full in parallel. I didn't realize. You no, 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 no. Vacuum full in parallel doesn't exist, and I'm checked in parallel oh. doesn't exist. You need to script it. Oh, okay. I understand now because of the partition. Like it's it's by the way it's interesting. People run them check in, in single thread, and I also did it until some uh, someone from GitLab uh, think think thanks for the, this question asked why we run it on, like we have so many cores why. And it was an excellent question, of course. It should be in parallel because it, it will produce results much faster. And if you use, if you are in the cloud and you use temporary clone, for example, of, co- of course you want to make your job faster, even if it occupies all CPUs, 100% of them, because you, you pay for uh, minutes or seconds of usage in AWS. Not for well, not for hundred percent or fifty percent. It doesn't matter. But for yeah. time, and you want to make your job faster, you you run, run full speed. Yeah, same in maintenance windows, I guess. So it's it's maintenance against windows, the clock, yes. but yeah. not the same for regular index maintenance on production because yeah. there you probably want a single thread or a few th- threads of uh, running uh, uh, index concurrently, maybe just single. Because it's still it's still already some stress, and you don't want to to ma- make it full speed. By the way, again, re- re- uh, I encourage our listeners to read uh, articles uh, on GitLab blog. Uh, they have good materials. I recommend. 
I, I remember all, uh, also Peter Gagan came and uh, learned something interesting from their experience and then uh, w working on uh, B3 dedu deduplication in Postgres 13 and 14. So it's uh, recommended material for it. Awesome. I suspect that's all we've got time for today. What do you think? Yeah, so it's already 40 minutes. Let's finish. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks uh, to everyone who keeps giving us feedback, keeps sending us suggestions and shares it online. We really appreciate it. Um, looking forward to seeing you next week. Cheers, Nicola. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. See you next week. Bye. Take care. Bye.